Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, it's time to rank all of the V-Star. And I had a thought about doing this video the other day, and I went, well, has it been long enough? And it's not been two months since I did this. But actually, in that time, we've gone from 8 V-Star to 15 which is almost doubling the amount we've actually got. And all of these have been officially revealed, and we know how we're getting all of them in English. So yes, it absolutely is about time we read at our list of the best V stars. Although this is going to get harder and harder to do as time goes by. So starting off at number 15, no change from before. It's still the worst one we've seen. It's Whimsicott V-Star. And I know not everybody's happy about me putting this dead last. The thing is, not unlike tag teams when they came out, the vast majority of these V-Star Pokemon really have something going for them. That doesn't mean they're all phenomenal cards, but it means all of them I can look at and go, yes, that's really good. One of the rare exceptions to this is Whimsicott. Free energy, 160, stops your opponent playing tools or special energy. And that could be good. But we've got decks around at the moment like Mew that are really, really reliant on special energy. Yeah, but they, they can attach it using Elisa Sparkle. So, so who really cares? Basically, most decks just aren't using that much special energy or have energy acceleration. And this doesn't end up being good enough. Plus, you've got the V-Star Power Fluffball Star. It does 60 to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So you pile a bunch of energy on to do an attack, and then you don't need it again in the future. Nah, not good enough. In at number 14, we've got ourselves Glaceon. And this is the first time I feel a little bit mean. I like Glaceon. Apparently, I don't like it enough to put it any higher. The main attack, free energy, 180, stops them retreating. It's not enough to get a KO on Pokemon V. And sure, if you start playing around with stuff like Choice Belt, it is. But I don't want to have to be bullied into playing that just to get KOs on Pokemon V, not with a V-Star. I do like the V-Star power, free energy, 220, and prevents all damage and effects and Pokemon's attacks done to this Pokemon next turn. But all your opponent needs to do is use boss's orders and they can attack something on the bench anyway. So again, there's a lot to like here, but it's too easily played around for me to put it any higher on the list. In at number 13, we've got Charizard. And Charizard I actually put 5th out of 8 last time round. It's now 13 out of 15. I want to like Charizard more than I actually like Charizard. You see, the free energy 230, if it's got any damage counters on, seems good. And it one-hits KO's Pokemon V. And it combos beautifully with Magma Basin. Will accelerate an energy and put the damage on. But you still need a third energy to get this rolling. The four energy 320 discard two of them is really good, potentially. But it won't KO all, all Pokemon V Max. It'll get all your V Star. But... Your main attack doesn't get V-Star, it just gets Pokemon V. And that puts Charizard in an awkward situation where the first attack will get Pokemon V and the second one will get V-Star, but not all the V-Max. And the first one won't get the V-Star. And it's just, the reason it's not being played as much at the moment is it seems to always just fall that little bit short. In at number 12, we've got Cleaver. And this is one that I very well might end up regretting. Cleaver could end up being a lot better than I'm giving it credit for. Now, the main attack here, I'm not particularly a fan of, really, like, at all. I'm not really loving Cleaver. For two energy, you do 120 to the active and 60 to a bench Pokemon V. If you could do the 60 to anything, I would be way more impressed by this. But you can't. It's just Pokemon V. I do really like the V-Star power. Single energy, 30 damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. And certainly the Wormadam deck I'm playing around with is going to adore this. But then you're playing a 1-1 line. And it's only going to work at some points during the game. It does seem, again, like it's just a little bit awkward. Now, in a number 11, we've got Hasui and Decidueye. And this is one of those ones where I really like it. And we see this with a bunch of the V-Star. 
but I only really like it as a one-off, as kind of like a one-one tech. Because you see, what we've got is a rather lovely V-Star power that lets you draw until you've got eight cards in your hand. Which is clearly good. We like that. Problem is, it's on a stage one, so, or not really a stage one, but equivalent there too. And essentially what you need to do is you've got to evolve up and then use this. I love that at some point during the game, you could just draw until you got eight cards in your hand and that's awesome. But if I'm doing that, I could be playing Arceus and searching any two cards. The attack for free energy does 160 and you can discard up to free energy from your hand. Doing 30 more for each one discarded, which is up to 250, which with a choice bout will KO any Pokemon V-Star. And there's a lot to like here. The problem is, accelerating energy on fighting Pokemon isn't the easiest. And I've got to get free energy on it, and I've got to get free energy in my hand, and I've got to get the choice bout to KO V-Stars. It's not as easy as it might look. In at number 10, we've got Shaman. And Shaman's another one of those which I really like. But it's been out for a little while now and people aren't playing it. Now, I don't like the V-Star power. During your turn, you may heal 120 from each of your bench grass Pokemon. Eh. The times you're going to get real value out of that are when you've got multiple grass Pokemon that have taken a big hit but not been KO'd. That's really rare. I do like the attack, though. Two energy, 120 plus 40 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. If they take a bunch of prizes, this adds up really quickly. I still love Shaman V-Star as a tech for this attack, but it's been out a while and very few people are actually playing it. In at number 9, the most recently revealed Pokemon we've got, Hisuian Lilligant. This was the last one revealed, which is going to be an Astral Radiance, and this one has some stuff going for it. Certainly in a grass deck, I think this is a must-play. Because what you've got here is free energy, 130, and if you put an energy from this Pokemon back into your hand, you do 100 more. And 230 is enough to KO Pokemon V, which is lovely, but I don't... It's weird, right? On the one hand, I like putting the energy into my hand so I can reattach it to a different Pokemon next turn. And on the other hand, I don't like that if I want to stream this attack, I've got to keep reattaching the same energy to the same Pokemon. But the V-Star Power lets you search for five grass Pokemon and grass energy in any combination. And it really is as simple as that. If I'm playing a grass deck, this V-Star Power is too gosh darn good. I'm probably going to want to play a 1-1 line. Also, I don't like many of the Pokemon V that evolve into V-Stars. Most of them have very little going for them. But I will say, Hisuian Lilligant V for zero energy lets you draw until you've got six cards in your hand. And actually, turn one going second, if you've got nothing else, that is a really nice zero energy attack. So that is one to very much bear in mind. In at number eight, we've got Lucario. And this is one that I'm going to admit right off the bat, this is one I feel like I could be wrong about. I feel good about this list, don't get me wrong. I did not spend two seconds on this list. I sat down and looked at all the V-Star and I spent a long time really getting this list the way I wanted it. I don't right now want to put Lucario anywhere other than directly in the middle. Seven above, seven below. But I think time could tell that Lucario ends up being a little bit better. You see, what we've got here is a main attack which is honestly largely unimpressive. If I could be so bold. It does 240 to a Pokemon V, but it's for free energy. And we've already said fighting Pokemon are kind of awkward. You can use double turbo energy, which is lovely, but then it's only doing 220, which to be fair is the magic number for Pokemon V, so maybe it's not the end of the world. Although like with all of these, you can always use Arceus V-Star to accelerate energy and then get them all rolling nice and easily. What I really like about Lucario is two energy, 70 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. That should get you a big one-hit KO at one point during the game. But with Arceus being weak to fighting, and Gengar seeing a lot of play and being weak to fighting, and Jolteon still seeing a fair amount of play and being weak to fighting, that first attack could end up being really good because you will be running through all of these while also KOing Pokemon V. I'm not loving the attack cost on Lucario, but the typing could be really good. Of course, we could just turn around straight away and say, hang on a second, 
it's weak to Mew. And then that is not an ideal scenario because they will be one hit KOing you very easily. Another thing that stops me putting it further up the list. In at number seven, we've got Leafeon. And this is one that still isn't seeing as much play as I was expecting. But I still think there's just so much potential that we can't really ignore. Free energy, 180, takes 30 less next turn. Just like I said about Glaceon, it's not enough damage for free energy on a, well, what is essentially a stage one. But the ability's gusting. And I'm sorry, but gusting has always been one of the best things to do in the game. It's always been one of the most powerful attacks, one of the most powerful supporter things, however you want to phrase it. And the fact of the matter is, it's too good. Gusting is too good and too useful and does too many good things. And this is, what's so great about this is you just sit on the bench and you wait. And you don't need to draw into a certain card or have your opponent do a certain thing. Unless something like Path to the Peak comes down and ability locks you, you can just wait for the perfect time and then just use this. And I think Gusting, which can sit on the bench and activate at the perfect time, is too good. Something we've got to take seriously. In at number six, and you'll notice that a lot of the top six is made up of Pokemon that are coming in Astral Radiance which is very interesting. But in at number six, we've got Palkia. And Palkia is one of those ones, when I first looked at it, I put it quite far down the list. And then I looked again and I moved it up. And the more I looked, the more I moved it up the list. Because you see, for two water energy, 60 damage, plus 20 more for each benched Pokemon in play. Well, if you've got five bench and your opponent's got five bench, that's 260. And what does that sound like? Sounds a lot like Suicune. Now, don't get me wrong. We all know that Suicune is generally played with Ludicolo to boost the damage. But still, this is a very, very nice attack. This one can build up very, very quickly. Plus, then you've got a V-Star Power that attaches up to free water energy from your discard pile to your water Pokemon in any way you like. And what you've got here is a really good attacker that could build up very quickly. You know, you could take away two bench Pokemon and still be casually one-hit KOing Pokemon V, which is clearly good. And then you've also got an ability. So even in decks where you're not really planning to attack with Palkia, you could still play a 1-1 line to have the ability. Yeah, there is a lot here that I like very much indeed. I could see this one being lower in the future, but I think right now there's so much potential to this that we need to take this seriously and put it here until we're proven otherwise. And in at number five, we've got Palkia's running mate, Dialga. And this is one that I feel very unsure about. Potential-wise, it is really hard to beat Dialga. Now, the attack, the main attack is fine. One colorless energy, 40 damage base, plus 40 more for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. So basically, if you can attach a whole bunch of energy in one go, this will do a whole lot of damage. The thing is, we do have that new Magnezone, which is also coming as a pre-release promo for what it's worth, that says once during your turn, and it's every turn per Magnezone, you can look at the top six cards of your deck, attach any number of metal energy you find to your Pokemon in any way you like, and shuffle the other cards into your deck. And maybe Magnezone is going to be good enough here. I honestly don't know. But if you can hit enough off Magnezone or some other kind of energy acceleration... This can get to very, very large damage. But really what makes me super happy here is when we look at this with the V-Star Power. And the V-Star Power is, again, a very expensive attack. Let's not make any bones about that. It's 5 energy, but it does 220, which is enough to KO a Pokemon V, pretty much any of them. And then you get to take another turn. You just literally take another turn. So all your once per turn abilities, you can use again. Support a card, use a second one. Because it's not a second one, it's a new turn. It's now your first one again. If you can get this working, this is going to be phenomenal. And even though I'm not sure how easy that's going to be, I've still got to pop it in at number five. Now, I'm putting a Sui and Typhlosion in at number four. And I'll be honest with you, this is higher than I imagined it would probably end up. The thing is, it's got that phenomenal V-Star power. It's an attack for a single energy that gets an immediate one-hit KO 
on any Pokemon that's got exactly four damage counters on. Simple as that. And that's just too good. In an Inteleon deck, you use two Inteleon to drop two damage counters each onto the same Pokemon. There's four. Boom. Instant KO. It's Evil Tal. Now, Evil Tal, to be fair, was a basic Pokemon. This is not. This is a single evolution. So it's not quite as techable as Evil Tal. But this is still very, very good. Very, very strong. So many of these V-Star, I love the idea of putting in as a 1-1 one, one tech. I don't like Typhlosion's main attack. Free energy, 180, place free damage counters. It's, it's fine, it's not good. But I don't care, because I love this V-Star power. An instant one-hit KOs on any Pokemon, regardless of HP. That is not something to sleep on. In at number three, we've got Hasui and Samurott. And this is really the one that I've got excited about. Of all the V-Star, this is the one that's tickling my fancy. For two Darkness Energy, you do 220 damage to any active Pokemon that already has damage counters on it. And unlike so many other Pokemon, it's not Pokemon V, it's any Pokemon. 220 is still the magic number, but to any Pokemon that's got any damage counters on, that's in the active. So Galarian Zigzagoon, drop a damage counter, boom, 220. Or Inteleon, or that new Gapejaw Bog Stadium, that really is just a reprint of Team Magma Stadium, except it doesn't give a pass to Team Magma Pokemon. And I just think this is too good. You know, we've still got Dark Patch to accelerate Darkness Energy, or I should say we'll have it back by this point. So we got a single evolution Pokemon that's two energy, but we got an item card that can accelerate one super easily, that then does 220, and we should not be struggling to get the damage counters on. I really, really like Hasui and Samurott. This strikes me as a kind of, I go first, and then from then on, I'm hitting 220 minimum every turn. And my opponent is going to be really struggling to keep up with that level of offensive output. It's just good. The ability places four damage counts on one of your opponent's Pokemon. This should, if you combine this with a choice belt, it will basically guarantee a one-hit KO on a Pokemon V-Star at one point during the game. That's not strictly true, I suppose. You'll be doing 270 total. So, you know, use one other thing to put one other damage counter on to get the really big boys. But this should get you. That V-Star power should make sure you get a V-Star at one point during the game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not nothing. In at number two, we've got Darkrai V-Star. And this, I put this as number one last time. And I still think it's absolutely phenomenal. But I've dropped it down to number two through no fault of its own. Now, this did not really crush in Japan since release like I was expecting. But it's still clearly extremely strong. What we've got here is an attack for two colorless energy that does 30 damage base. Plus 30 more for each darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Well, I've already told you Dark Patch is back. And we've got both of those Galarian Moltres, the non-V that lets you attach two energy when you bench it, and the V that gets an energy out of the discard onto it every turn. Although remember, you can only use that once per turn, regardless of how many Moltres you have. And what we've got here is just lots of energy acceleration and a Pokemon that can take advantage, but only two of those energy need to be on Darkrai, so you don't even lose many resources if Darkrai gets KO'd. Plus, you've then got an ability that places two item cards from your discard pile into your hand, which is great for mid-game recovery, and you are just absolutely rolling. Everything is set up for Darkrai V-Star to be a powerhouse. But in at number one, it's Arceus. When I made the list before, Arceus was not as dominant. It wasn't looking like it was going to be quite so dominant. A little bit of time has passed, and now I am happy to sit here and be like, yeah, Arceus is that good. Arceus V-Star came out of a lot of promise, but we needed to see how good it was. And then it started crushing online tournaments. We were like, well, that, let's wait to see what happens when we get to in-person tournaments. And Arceus is just absolutely crushing. And honestly, we're going to need some kind of change in the metagame for me to change my opinion on Arceus being number one. Trinity Nova for free energy does 200 damage. 
And you get to search your deck for up to three basic energy and attach them to your Pokemon V in any way you like. Add a choice belt. That's a one-hit KO on basically any Pokemon V while you accelerate energy. And Arceus basically makes any Pokemon V, V-Star, or VMAX viable. We've seen Pokemon coming out of the woodwork that haven't seen play for ages and doing really well lately because Arceus is that good. And then you've got the ability Starbirth, which literally lets you search for any two cards. Which is nuts! Some of the builds earlier today, I want to say, I showed you the winning deck from IG Champions League this past weekend. And it's this weird deck with loads of one and two ofs. And basically, the reason is because you can muck around with Starbirth. You can make some weird looking deck list, but the second you get Starbirth rolling, you are good. Although playing Inteleon in a deck like that does help as well. Basically, it makes any Pokemon V, V Max, or V Star good. And it's really good. You know, the deck that won IT Regionals had Inteleon for support, you know, for consistency, but it was just. And I should say Champions League. It was just an Arceus deck that attacked with Arceus. Or it works great with basically anything. It is absolutely full-on brokenly good. And when I do this list again in a couple of months' time, you should expect Arceus V-Star to still be number one. Unless there's a giant shift in the meta, or some absolutely game-breaking card gets revealed. But then again, Arceus is an absolutely game-breaking card. It has very literally broken the game. But in a it's good kind of way, not in the game doesn't work anymore kind of way. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? What do you think about my list? What would you change? What would you put up? What would you go down? Do please remember the rule. If you're putting cards up, you need to put other cards down. If you're putting cards down, you need to put other cards up. Don't just tell me this card should be higher. Tell me where it should be and what you would drop. And if you want to put your own list from 1 to 15, I'd be pretty happy to read it. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.